Okay, so the title for the message this morning is Who Are You? Who are you? Not Lord, who are you? But who each one of you is. Who are you? You know, one of the most important revelations that we can get from the Word of God is to understand who we are. Not just who we think we are, but who the Bible says that we are in Christ. Identifying with Christ will change the way we live and cause us to rise above adversity. Not understanding our identity in him will keep us living far below our destiny. Amen? Amen. So what does it mean to be in Christ? When you read the first two chapters of the Paul's letter to the Ephesians, that phrase, in him or in Christ, is repeated 13 times, just in the first two chapters. We read a part of it in our reading this morning. So clearly, Paul is taking advantage of all the many benefits that flow from being a part of the people of God. You know, it's normal for us to identify with something or someone. It makes us feel connected. You know, for a lot of people it's their footy team, isn't it? Or something like that. I believe it's worthwhile spending a bit of time having a good look at ourselves as our identity as believers. You know, in the very beginning of the scriptures tell us that we were made in the image of God. Humans, male and female, were created in the image of God. We had fellowship with the Father directly. He came and fellowship with us after, you know, until the fall. And after the fall, we were separated from the Father because of sin. We could no longer be bearers of the image of God. Instead, our fellowship with the Father, our thoughts and actions became centred on ourselves. We became self-conscious. We became self-seeking. We became self-centred. All in all, we just became selfish. In fact, the very next event that we see following the fall of Adam and Eve, when they were kicked out of the garden, involves the murder of Abel by his brother Cain. A despicable act of murder brought about by sheer jealousy. A selfish act that unfortunately is now commonplace today, isn't it? Then came Jesus and he showed us what the Father is like. Jesus said, you know, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He showed us the kingdom. He showed us what we were intended to be. And by his death and resurrection, he made it possible for us to receive forgiveness and reconciliation with the Father. Now here's the thing. We were not saved so that we could just survive on earth and go to heaven when we die. No. No, no. The Holy Spirit was sent to live in us. It became possible for us to become new creatures, transformed into the image of God again. Creatures with a radically transformed identity and purpose. Yeah. Our purpose was to introduce others to Christ and to grow the church. Unfortunately, some Christians have, are having an identity crisis. They don't know who they are in Christ. And instead of identifying themselves with him, they identify themselves with the problems that confront them. You can tell they do this because they call themselves by their problems. I'm divorced. I'm bankrupt. And so forth. Some identify with a profession and they say things like, you know, I'm a salesman. I'm a lawyer. I'm a pastor. <laughs> but their profession is not who they are. It's what they do. Others identify with the disease that's attacking their bodies. 
They're encouraged by the medical authorities to identify with their condition. In fact, to own their condition. They say, I'm diabetic, or I'm ADD, or I'm bipolar. And they say things like, my cancer is terminal. My cancer is terminal? My arthritis is killing me. When we really understand our identity with Christ, who we are in Him, it changes the way that we think and live. So, we'll be sharing a lot of scripture this morning. And I, I want you to, even as I read it, and you see it on the screen, read it for yourselves. And I don't care if you all read it out loud, because that's the best way to get it from here to here, is to hear yourself speaking faith-filled words of God. So 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that same verse in the Living Bible says, When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. So when Paul writes a new creation, he's saying that we're created to be something that has never existed on the world before. A totally new type of human. That's what that means. We are a totally new type of human. Those of you who went to the Bible studies last year will have heard Tom Wright saying exactly the same thing. Right? Jesus taught us how to be truly human. Before we were in Christ, we were destined for death and destruction. But now the promise, the Bible promises us that we have eternal life. Right? 1 John 2.25 And this is the promise that he has promised us. What? Eternal, eternal life. Before Christ, we were destined for despair degradation and poverty but in Christ we are destined to have life John 10:10 10, 10. the thief that's the devil isn't it the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy i have come that they may have life and have it to the full in Christ is where our identity should be it's in Jesus that we are somebody amen right it's in Jesus that we are somebody. We might not have a title like the king or queen of England, but in Christ, we are somebody very special. You ever notice in the scriptures, if you read through the scripture, the Bible stories, how God often changed people's identity? He did that. They looked at themselves one way, but God told them who they really were. This is what happened to Gideon in the book of Judges. In Judges 6, verses 1 to 11, he was so terrified of the Midianites that were raiding the land that he hid in a wine press to thresh his wheat. He believed the Midianites would take what little he had if they saw him threshing his grain. And one day the angel of the Lord to, appeared to Gideon and said, Is that there? Yeah. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon was acting like anything but a mighty warrior. However, when he finally saw himself the way God saw him, he went on to defeat the Midianites and deliver his nation, the people of Israel, from their cruel oppression. Just that one word, that one word from God changed the history of his nation. God also changed Abram's name. It was impossible for Abram and his wife Sarai to have children. But God said, no longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. 
for I have made you a father of many nations. He also changed Sarah's name, changed it from Sarai to Sarah. And God's words were fulfilled when Sarah gave birth to Isaac. You know, she was over 100 years old at that point. First child, 100 years old. Can you imagine that? <laughs> God calls those things that are not as though they were. In the natural realm, what God is calling us may not yet exist, but in His eyes it does. That song we sang this morning, Let the blind say, I can see. Amen. The poor say, I'm rich. I picked that song for that reason. Right? It's what the Lord has done in me. Amen. <clears throat> Hosanna. Amen. Amen. That's what that song was all about. In the natural realm, what God is calling us may not yet exist, but in His eyes it does. So when we need to talk about ourselves, sorry, so then we need to talk about ourselves the same way God does. It's not a mystery anymore what God thinks of us. Colossians 1, 26 and 27. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is... Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the whole purpose of creation to begin with. All summed up in that one line. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That God would have a body of people who worshipped him and loved him of their own free will choice. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's plan A, isn't it? That's plan A. There's no plan B. That's plan A. As carriers of the image of God, our role is to bring the kingdom to bear wherever we go. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come right here, right now, on earth as it is in heaven. Our role and our purpose are to bring the kingdom in love to those we come across wherever we go. That's our role. Why, this is, why is this important and why do we need to get a handle on how God sees us? Well, the answer is pretty simple. If we don't know who we are in Christ, then it will be difficult for us to receive that inner healing that is necessary to bring us to wholeness. I mean, we're all damaged goods. We're all carrying the baggage of our past. And we all need that to be healed and to be made whole. If we don't know who we are in Christ, then we cannot have the faith to operate in the kingdom. If we don't know that we know that we know, that Jesus said, I will be healed. If we don't know that for an hour, deepest of our innermost beings then we'll think that God can't use us because we're not good enough if we don't understand who he is and the finished work of Jesus on the cross we'll never see either our own healing or even those that we pray for receive their healing so the first thing we need to do is get a handle on how God sees us. So I'm just going to read some scriptures from, for a little while. And you can read them with me, okay, if you like. I know it would be nice if you even read them anyway. So this is how God sees us. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Amen. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the <laughs> promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Ephesians again, 20, chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Sorry. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Ever. Amen. Now, there is actually a kicker in that first verse of that passage. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And what's the limiting power? What limits that amount? Our mind. According to the power that works in us. If we don't know who we are in Christ, if we don't know that we have his Holy Spirit to empower us to live as King's kids, to empower us to live and walk and act as an image bearer of the image of God, there's no power there. If we don't have the faith to understand that we're saved, he can't do all those things he wants to do. That's the limiting factor. So to wind this thing up then, it seems to me that the key to the whole thing lies in answering the question, what does in Christ mean? It means that instead of a sinner, you're called Christian. Instead of lost, you're called found. Instead of enemy, you're called friend. Instead of unrighteous, you're called righteous. Instead of sick, you're called healed. Instead of poor, you're called rich. And when you understand your new identity in Christ, you'll be a stronger and more stable Christian. Your faith will work for you better. Your prayer life will be enhanced. And you'll walk in a new level of authority. Being in Christ is a stupendous reality. It's breathtaking to be united with Christ, you know, to be bound to him. If you are in Christ, listen to some of what it means for you. What have I got here? I've missed out on some pages, haven't I? Oh, hang on, I don't know what's going on. Second Timothy one nine. There it is. In Christ Jesus you were given grace before the world was created. There you go. But according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus. When? Before time began. Before time began. When did time begin? Time began when God created the, the world and started spinning it. In the beginning. So you had the sun on one side. And so there was day and night. Right? That's when time began. 
the day that earth started spinning and created day and night. That's when time began. In Christ Jesus you were chosen by God before creation. Just as he chose us where? In him. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He knew you before even the world was created. He knew you. He knew you'd be sitting here today to see that with your own eyes. In Jesus, you would, you're, in Christ Jesus, you're loved by God with an inseparable love. For I am persuaded, says Paul, in the book of Romans, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, neither height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You're getting excited? Woo! <laughs> In Christ Jesus you were redeemed and forgiven for all your sins. In him we have redemption through his blood. What? The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So if his grace is limited, it's unlimited grace, isn't it? According to the riches of his grace. In Christ Jesus you are justified by God and you are the righteousness of God in Christ. So 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In Christ Jesus... You have become a new creation and a child of God, as we read earlier. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Galatians 3.26 For you were all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You know, when it comes to our identity as believers, we can do no better than agree with the scriptures and simply say, I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. That's me. What you see, that's me, Lord. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Amen. 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 Amen.